Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and wherever you are, first of all, Happy New Year and welcome to the new year. Based on a lot of popular request and demand, we will be continuing our discussion in this new year on segment routing and I would very specifically be focusing on the SRV visas. In my previous series, a lot of you have already gone through. If you are new, uh, maybe I would strongly recommend you to go ahead and take a look at the previous series on the segment routing, which focuses on the one of the type where the segment routing kind of uses the MPLS as the data plane. And now continuing on the same thing, now we'll go ahead and take a look at the SRV6. So if you take a look at this word, SRV6 is kind of made up of two words. There is a first word, which is your SR, and most of you already are familiar. SR stands for segment routing. And the V6 here really, really stands for IPv6. So now we would be making use of the segment routing, which is very flexible, has a lot of powers as we learned through in the previous series. And now we would be seeing how the SR can go ahead and make use of the IPv6. And both of combined, you know, what are the advantage or what are the benefits that SRV V6, or which is simply stands for segment routing over IPv6, how is it different from the SR MPLS word? Or what is unique about the SR V6? But before we really deep dive into SR V6, we need to understand, you know, why there was a need for SR V6, first of all, right? There must have been some kind of a limitation, you know, uh, on the previous thing, you know, which we were working with, let's say IPv4 or whatever. Or things were, you know, kind of a limitations or lacking. And what was the kind of the driving force or the motivation, you know, that kind of, you know, ask people around, okay, hey, now probably we need to look for some other alternative. And because of that, you know, SRV V6 kind of, you know, really came into the existence. So again, I would be referencing our, you know, uh, friendly blog at the segment-routing.net. Thanks to those guys, you know, all credit goes to them for putting such a wonderful material out there what we went through in the MPLS series. And now I would be referencing some of their great content as we progress on the SRV V6 as well as we'll continue to make use of Cisco's official documentation. And I, again, highly encourage you to spend some time on those documentation, make yourself familiar. And this is the part one of the series, you know, where I'm just trying to give you some little bit of background on the SRV V6, or just trying to answer the question, what is SRV V6? And as we progress further, we're going to go ahead and deep dive on a lot of things. And again, don't worry if some of the things don't make sense early on. We would be doing a lot of hands-on and, you know, during the hands-on also, I will be making sure I would go ahead and explain every single concept that we're going to go ahead and learn initially into the theoretical sections of this series. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and, you know, drill down onto the SRV V6 here. So now let me go ahead and scroll down further on this slide deck and I'm just going to stop at a few things, you know, which are pretty kind of keen. So as most of we already kind of know, uh, what is the uh, segment routing? Segment routing is simply the source routing, and this is something we have learned in the MPLS series also. That source routing where the source is kind of encoding the things, and you know, then the, we had the transit nodes, and then you had the destination. So here the source routing, the topological and your service path is encoded in your packet header. Uh, it was pretty scalable. It had a lot of simplicity like TILFA or sub 50 millisecond of FRR. And you could go ahead and deploy the SR either in DC metro or as well as in the WAN. And in the previous series, we kind of focused on primarily on the MPA. So if you remember, the segment routing has kind of support for the two data planes. We spent quite a bit of time with the MPLS. In the case of MPLS, we had one segment, which was simply a label. And one segment was equal to a one label in the SR MPLS case. And then we had something called a segment list. A segment list, again, the name says it's just simply a labeled stack. So you have a stack of uh, labels which was simply we were referring as a segment list. Now we would be spending quite a bit of time in this series where we would be using IPv6 as our data plane for the segment routing. So that means you have all those great powers or the things of a segment routing, like flexibility, what we talked about earlier, some of the other things. But now we would also be tapping into the power of IPv6. Now with that, a segment, which was the same thing in case of MPL, a segment was a label. Now here a segment is simply an address. So keep that in mind. Again, don't worry. This is an intro series or introduction. As we go further, progress, you know, progress further in this series, a lot of these things will start to make a whole lot of sense to you. But again, I would highly encourage if you have not seen or have not spent enough time on the previous series, just go ahead and take a quick look 
it will kind of help you to understand this IPv6 or the segment routing with IPv6 uh, pretty easily, let, let's put it that way. Now, in the case of MPLS, we had a segment list, which we were just simply calling a labeled stack. Here, a simple a segment list is again an address, because if you remember, in case of MPLS, segment was a label, and here a segment is one address. That's the reason the segment list is becoming what? Is an address list in the SRH. And again, don't worry, what is SRH? I'll go ahead and explain all of these things as we progress further into this series. Now, obviously, IPv6 provide a lot of, you know, uh, reachability. So with that, let's go ahead and understand what were the problems we were running. So IPv4, obviously, a lot of you already kind of know, there were good limitations, like we had limited IP addresses. Everybody knows that's a kind of one of the reasons that we are kind of, you know, moving away from IPv4 to IPv6. Uh, there was no injured load balancing, no VPN support, no traffic engineering. And I know some of you can say when you say no traffic engineering, we did some traffic engineering. But if you remember, we did traffic engineering with the help of SRTE or RSVPTE. Uh, same thing, there were no support for the service chaining. And these are just different layers at what layer, you know, some of these things operate. And to work around, there were a lot of things were invented, like to overcome the limited address space. We started using NAT and there were different type of NAT, you know, source NAT, destination NAT, a different type of NAT we started uh, make use of. Then for the load balancing, we invented and looked up MPLS and trophy labels. For VPN, we kind of invented the MPLS VPNs or VXLANs. Traffic engineer, as we talked about, RSVPT or either SRT MPLS. And service chaining is the NSH. And again, we'll go ahead and talk about some of these things. So these were some of the workaround and that's where the IPv6 really came into the picture. Hey, with IPv6, no more of these workaround. We don't have to use any NAT because if you remember, IPv6 has a lot of addresses. So that means practically there is no need to do any kind of a NAT here. And again, we would take a look at traffic engineering. Okay. Instead of using SRT, MPLST, we would go ahead and take a look at and see how some of these things kind of, you know, comes to our aid and help us uh, doing some of these things. So with that, let me go ahead and quickly hop over to Cisco's official documentation on segment routing over IPv6. And again, as we talked about, SR, which stands for segment routing, IPv6, here we are taking the V6. That's the reason you would see a lot of documentation saying SRV6. It is simply segment routing over IPv6. And again, remember, IPv6 or MPLS were the data plane that your segment routing can be applied to or your segment routing uses. In previous series, we spent a lot of substantial time on the MPLS. This series is going to focus where SR is going to go ahead and make use of IPv6 as your data plane. Okay. So segment routing over IPv6 extends the same segment routing support. Now we will be going to go ahead and make use of the IPv6 data plane. Now, again, I'm not expecting you to be an expert on IPv6, but if this is the very first time you are encountering IPv6, I would strongly suggest you go ahead and spend a little bit of time with it. IPv6, you know, take a look at how the IPv6 addresses are assigned or how are they simply formed, you know, what are the, like kind of the mask, if I have to say, you know, in IPv4, you are kind of familiar, okay, class A, class B, class C, class D, kind of the mask, and most of the time you end up using A, B, or C, you know, majority of the time. Now, take a look at how the separate masks are being assigned in the case of IPv6. Uh, some of you might already be familiar with how, IP, how an IPv4 header looks like. Probably take spend, spend time to take a look at you know how the IPv6 header uh, looks like. And again, I don't expect you to be an expert. As we progress further in the series, I'll try to explain you as much as possible. But if you can, you know, make yourself familiar with some of the things when I explain, they, it would make a lot more sense to you pretty easily. So in an SR MPLS enabled network, an MPLS label represents an instruction. That's what we had learned in previously. The source node, that's the reason it is called segment routing, is a source routing. The source node, programs the path to a destination in packet header, okay, as a stack of labels. Now, in the case of SRVv6, SRVv6 introduces the network programming framework. Remember, guys, this is just simply a framework that enables a network operator or an application to specify a packet processing program by encoding a sequence of instruction in the IPv6 packet header. This is the key, guys, here. This whole line kind of explains that we would be encoding a lot of these instructions in the IPv6 packet header. That means we would be interacting with IPv6 a lot. And again, this line kind of really indicates we would be dealing with quite a lot of things with the IPv6 packet header. That's, that's the reason I'm encouraging you to go ahead and spend some time learning about the IPv6, and especially the IPv6 header format, what are the different fields and you know what every field kind of does there. 
So now here clearly says the each instruction is implemented on one or several nodes in the network and identified by an SRV v6 segment identifier in the packet. So just like the way in the MPLS, we have the prefix set or the node set. In the case of SRV v6, we will also have a set and that set we are calling it simply as SRV v6 segment identifier. And this segment identifier is going to be programmed on several nodes as we did in the case of MPLS, we you all are familiar. And again, I would highly encourage for you to spend a little bit of time on the RFC 8986, which is on SRV v6. And now let me go ahead and quickly switch over to the RFC here. So this is the RFC 8986 that talks about the segment routing over IPv6, in short, SRV6, and which is a network program. Again, it's not a, like a pretty uh, long RFC. It's pretty nice. I would highly encourage if you can spend a lot of time. This is really, really good. It has a lot of great useful information, guys, you know. And I would be referencing as we further progress in this series, especially during the theoretical section, you know, uh, because those are really important before we really deep dive into the hands-on. And again, this abstract is kind of a simply represents what we just read on the Cisco's official documentation. But if you take a look at this, SRV v6 has quite a lot of things and, you know, we will go ahead and expand as we further, like we'll, we're going to deal with SRV v6 set, which is again, you know, talking, if I have to compare quickly, is your prefix set or the node set. We'll go ahead and deep dive into the set format. How do we allocate, you know, the reachability, the different behaviors, and we're going to talk about different type of endpoints. And what is this n.x? What is n.t? What is n.dxx? And all of these good things we're going to go ahead and spend quite a bit of time. So do spend some time reading, you know, as we further progress in the series. Uh, spend some time on this RFC 8986. Go over the Cisco's official documentation. All these resources are pretty great, you know. I can't uh, say enough, you know, thanks to these guys. Again, all the credit goes to these folks in terms of putting such a wonderful material out there. And again, go refer this particular blog. It has a lot of good, you know, useful information. So again, this I just wanted to give you a quick intro, you know, what we are starting in this new year. Hope uh, it made you excited. And I know uh, I took a little bit of time, but let me, you know, assure you, once we start this series, I'll help you finish this series, you know. If there are any questions, feel free to post and I'll try to answer uh, you know, as soon as possible. With that, thank you. I will see you guys in the next episode of this series. Thank you.